Hi friends, good morning. Last 40 45 days left for your examination. I hope you are safe and your preparations are going full fledged. Now, ICAI has came out with the latest RTP. The RTP is applicable for November 2020 exam. In this session, we'll be doing RTP for CA final auditing. Now, I was expecting a bit more from RTPs like the treatment related to COVID, etc. How do we report? That all thing was expected by me. But unfortunately, ICAI has not covered those in the RTP. Now, they have the regular amendments which have came up. Now, our material which was issued to you in the face-to-face -face batch which was conducted in November 2019. The November 19 batch, we had issued material. Uske baad, I had came out with six-page amendment. Yes, six pages of amendment I had came out. That was circulated on Telegram group. That covers all your amendments which are given in RTP. So there's nothing additional in RTP, but yeah, we'll go through it. We'll go through the RTP once, all questions also. So just this two hours, this two hours will help you to evaluate the entire RTP. You'll understand all RTP questions are already there in our material. So our material, which was issued in face to face batch of November 2019 and the six page amendment, which was circulated later, they cover all the amendments till now applicable for November 2020. Okay, let's start with your RTP of November 2020 CA final auditing. Yes, this is your RTP. I marked out the important things so that we don't have to read each and every line. This highlighted things will give you crux of everything. And yeah, this highlighted sheet, I am putting it as a link in the description. So no need to mark together with me. This highlighted sheet is given in your description. I have given the link of it. So don't worry about it. You can download it directly. Okay, now first they've given definition of government company. Few amendments, then the questions. Now, what is the definition of government company? Government company is a company in which not less than 51% means 51% or more of paid up capital, not less than 51% of paid up capital is held by either state government or central government or combinedly by state or central government or a company which is a subsidiary of a government company that is also a government company. Okay, the normal definition we know it is a company in which at least 51%, so 51% or more of paid up capital is held by central government or state government or combinedly by central or state government. Now, what's the amendment? There's an explanation given. It's actually not an amendment. It's kind of additional explanation given to you. The question I have paid up capital not less than 51% of paid up capital. No question. What does paid up capital include? Does it include equity share capital? Now equity share capital has two parts. Normal differential voting right, DVR. Differential voting right, yes. So they are equity shares, they have a differential voting power or they have a differential dividend rights. They are called DVRs. So they're telling paid up capital will also include differential voting right while equity shares as well. Your paid up capital includes equity. That was there. Now question, preference is included or not included? Preference is included or not included? They say no. To interpret it as not paid up capital, interpret it as total voting power. You should be holding not less than 51% of total voting power. Total voting power. Normal equity shares covered. Equity shares with differential voting right. They also have voting power, are differential. They might have double voting. They might have half voting power. That is also covered. But our preference shares will not get covered. So check the definition. Explanation, what is given? The explanation says... For the purpose of this clause, the paid up share capital will be construed as total voting power where the shares with differential voting right has been issued. So don't count only normal equity, 
normal equity and your DVRs, differential voting right wale shares. Both are to be counted. So government company is a company in which not less than 51% of paid up share capital, uske jaga you have to interpret as total voting power, not less than 51% of total voting power is held by either CG or SG or combinedly by CG or SG. Okay, this was one. Next, under section 143, subsection 3. Uh, yaad karo. Section 143, subsection 3. We have to report 10 things. Yeah, 143.3, mandatory reporting, 10 items. There's one more addition now. Under 143.3, there were 10 items. Now, one more thing to be added. Now, what is this addition? Whether the remuneration paid to directors are within the limits of Section 197. Oh, Yadkaro, Section 197 of Companies Act, managerial remuneration. So we are required to report whether the remuneration is within the limits of section 197 read with schedule 5 that we have to report under section 143 subsection 3. Now, sir, why? Now there's not an amendment in section 143. It is due to amendment under section 197. I repeat, it's not due to amendment in 143. It's due to amendment in 197 section 197 subsection 16 section 197 subsection 16 is introduced which says auditor has to report in their audit report whether the remuneration paid to directors are within the limits given under section 197 read with schedule 5 so section 197 subsection 16 wants auditor to report whether the remuneration is within the limits. Now, we will report where? We will report where? To under section 143, subsection 3. We are reporting 10 items. Remember? Reporting on other legal and regulatory matters. Any audit report? Reporting on other legal and regulatory matters was there. Usme we will have this extra point, 11th. So 10 ki jaga, 11 reportings now under section 143 subsection 3 next is nafras your section 132 section 132 is on nafra they came out with nafra rules they came out with nafra rules and nafra rules may they're given functions which will be performed by nafra the functions are fine Functions are actually fine. It's given in our material also, already was there. The functions of NAFRA was basically there. Now they say every auditor, every auditor shall file a return with NAFRA on or before 30th November every year in NAFRA 2. So every auditor has to file a return with NAFRA on or before 30th November every year. And the form is NAFRA 2. So what are the contents of form? What are the contents of form not applicable for you? It will be applicable practically. Yeah, currently exam purpose, it's not applicable for you. So we have NAFRA rules coming in. In NAFRA rules, there are functions of NAFRA. Functions of NAFRA are to basically advise the government on new accounting standard, advise the government <clears throat> on new auditing standard, keep a watch on auditors. So that is all the basically functions given. Now they say every auditor has to file a return with NAFRA. Yeah, you have to file a return with NAFRA on or before 30th of November by way of NAFRA 2, form number NAFRA 2. That's it. So that is just a small amendment in NAFRA rules. I hope you're clear. This is fine. And if you don't comply, if the auditor doesn't file that return with NAFRA, there are penalties given. If auditor doesn't file that return with NAFRA, what's the penalty? Penalty minimum 1 lakh rupees. But it can extend to 5 times the fee received for an individual minimum is 1 lakh 
but it can extend to five times the fees received for individuals firm ke liye minimum 5 lakhs and it can exceed to 10 times of the fees received by the firm yeah auditor can be individual or a firm for individual if you are not filing auditor is individual he doesn't file that nafra ke sath form and nafra 2 penalties minimum 1 lakh up to 5 times the fees it can extend for a ca firm appointed as auditor minimum is 5 lakh and it can exceed to 10 times of the fees which is received by you and yes they can debar you from taking any audit assignment they can also debar you for performing any valuation work simple words now you are required to file a return with nafra on or before 30th of november form number nafra 2 clear with this next chapter number 7 audit committee and corporate governance mark this as important mark this as important yeah i'm not at my studio so there's no much flexibility available to me yes i am at my native place and i'm doing recording from there now this amendment is related to auditors resignation very important chapter 7 audit committee and corporate governance if auditor of a listed company resigns if auditor of a listed company resigns this is under sebi lodr regulations if you want to resign they say there are some timely disclosures required you have to do disclosure company will also disclose to basically stock exchanges that all is fine now if i want to resign what are the now new things which are added just pay attention i'm going to this third point i'm going to this third point they have inserted sub clause 7a under your sebi lodr regulation which requires detailed reason to be disclosed by the listed entities to the stock exchange okay so whenever your auditor resigns detailed reasons are to be disclosed by listed entity to the stock exchange auditor resigning will give his reasons to the company listed company listed company will give the reasons to stock exchange the detailed reasons to be disclosed by listed entity to the stock exchange in case of resignation of auditor now sir within how much time within how much time not later than 24 hours from receipt of such reason from the auditor if i resign i'll give the reasons why i'm resigning to the listed company within 24 hours they will give the reasons to stock exchange why the auditor resigned now recently there have been few cases where auditors of listed companies are resigning yeah there was a company named as manpasand beverages limited yeah manpasand beverages limited auditor was deloitte and deloitte left it citing a reason they are not getting adequate documents on non cooperation by management the management is not cooperating they are not giving the required documents because of that they are resigning now whatever reason auditor is giving within 24 hours the company has to submit a detailed reason to stock exchange okay this is okay now go to point number 6 go to point number 6 this is most important 90% there will be a question out of this telling 90% in your exam there will be a question out of this now auditor of a listed company resigns or auditor of material subsidiary of a listed company resigns okay now imagine A Limited is a listed company. A has many subsidiaries. A Limited is a listed company. A has many subsidiaries. Imagine out of all subsidiaries, there are some material subsidiaries. Threshold is given. Material subsidiary. Its net worth is twenty percent or more of total net worth. Its profits are twenty percent or more of consolidated profits. Material subsidiary. Okay. But if auditor of listed company resigns. 
और ऑडिटर ऑफ मटीरियल सब्सिडरी ऑफ लिस्टेड कंपनी रिजाइन तो और लिस्टेड कंपनी का ऑडिटर रिजाइन या उनका मटीरियल सब्सिडरी आई एम टेलिंग मटीरियल नॉट ऑल वॉट इज मटीरियल यू डन द डेफिनेशन तो ऑडिटर ऑफ लिस्टेड कंपनी रिजाइनिंग और मटीरियल सब्सिडरी का ऑडिटर रिजाइनिंग देन वॉट आर द थिंग्स के लिए ऑल लिस्टेड कंपनीज और मटीरियल सब्सिडरी शेल एंश्योर द कंप्लायस विद द फॉलोइंग वाइल अपॉइंटिंग और रीअपॉइंटिंग ऑडिटर ना पे अटेंशन इफ ऑडिटर रिजाइंस विद इन फोर्टी फाइव डेज फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ क्वार्टर क्वार्टर इज ओवर क्वार्टर ओवर एंड विद इन फोर्टी फाइव डेज यू आर रिजाइनिंग यू नीड टू परफॉर्म द लिमिटेड रिव्यू फॉर दैट क्वार्टर If you resign within forty-five days from the end of quarter, say quarter ended in June, quarter ended in June, April, May, June, Q1. If quarter ended in June, and you resign, and you resign before forty-five days from end of quarter, quarter ended on thirtieth June. Add forty-five days, fourteenth August, thirty-one days of July, fourteen days August. If you resign till fourteenth August, then you have to do the audit of that Q one. If you resign within forty five days from the end of quarter, you have to do the audit of that quarter, June wala, April May June. Again, repeat. Q one is April May June. In a listed company, we have a quarterly limited review. Yeah, in a listed company. Is audit applicable for entire year, quarterly, unaudited but reviewed financial statements are to be published in newspaper and are to be given to stock exchanges. So over here they are telling, suppose Q one ended in thirtieth June. If you resign before fourteenth August, within forty five days. From the end of quarter, quarter ended in June. Forty-five days is fourteenth August. Then, the auditor has to give a review report for Q one. Repeat, Q one के लिए. Now, sir, what if I resign after fourteenth August? Q one ended in June. If you resign within forty-five days from end of quarter, that quarter you audit. If you resign after forty-five days, what shall I do? Say I resign on sixteenth August. If you resign on fifteenth or sixteenth August, then you have to give a limited review report for Q one and Q two. You cannot resign before completing Q two. You cannot resign before completing Q two. So now they are trying to put a restriction on auditor resigning abruptly. So many times auditors were resigning abruptly. They say no, no, no. Now that's not allowed. And the reason is. Many times, auditors were resigning, and they were not giving the correct reason why they resigned. Now, reason might be there are a lot of issues in company, there are some frauds in company. But when they re resign, they say non-cooperation by management. So you resigned actually not due to non-cooperation, actually due to other issues. Now they are not allowing you to resign. So, if you resign within forty-five days from end of quarter, you have to do the audit of that quarter. If you resign after forty-five days from end of quarter, say you resign on fifteenth or sixteenth of August, then you have to mandatorily do limited review for Q one and Q two. You can't resign like that. You have to finish Q two, then resign. The so simple words: resign करना है. Quarter over. Within forty-five days from end of quarter, you resign. Ah, you finish that quarter. Next quarter, now you don't have to do. So April, May, June. This is Q one. Q one ended on thirtieth June. Q one ended on thirtieth June. If you resign within forty-five days from the end of quarter, that is till fourteenth August, you have to give a limited review report for Q one. If you resign after forty-five days, say on fifteenth or sixteenth August, then you have to report. You have to give a limited review report for Q one as well as Q two. Q 
as well as Q2. Now, ICAI has not given any examples. They've not given any dates. Like I said, you resign till 14th August, you have to do Q1. You resign on 15th August or later, you have to do Q1 and Q2. In the amendment sheet which I had circulated, in the amendment sheet which I had circulated, there is an example of this. Now again, I'm telling you, our material, the amendment sheet and this RTP marked ones, I will be putting it as a link in description. You can just take it or download it from there if you don't have it. Okay, if you resign within 45 days from end of quarter, jo quarter end hua, uska audit karo, review. And if you resign after 45 days from end of quarter, then you have to do that quarter as well as next quarter. Okay, and one more thing. If, if you have reported on Q1, Q2, Q3, if you reported on Q1, Q2, Q3, mandatorily you have to report on Q4 and the entire year. If you reported Q1, Q2, Q3, then you can't resign in this year. You have to mandatorily complete the full year's audit. The seal. Notwithstanding the above, if auditor has signed, if the auditor has signed limited review for first three quarters, if you have done first three quarters, then before resignation, he shall issue a limited review for the last quarter as well. So Q3 ended. Q3 ended in December. Yeah, Q1 ended June. Q2 ends in September. Q3 ends in December. Now December may end. Can I resign within 45 days from end? If you resign within 45 days, you have to do audit of that quarter. So Q1, Q2, you already reported. If you resign, if you resign, basically after after 31st December, so up Sochro, yeah, December quarter is getting over. I can resign within 45 days. I'll finish December. Now, if you reported three quarters, if you reported three quarters, you have to mandatorily report whole year as well. So, sir, if I don't want to report whole year, what shall I do? If I don't want to report whole year, what shall I do? You have to resign. You have to resign. See the words. Before 15th October. Agar aapne 15th October ke baad resign kiya, you have to complete. Not 15th October, 15th November. Why I come? I'm coming to it. So you have to resign by 15th November. If you resign after 15th November, you have to complete the whole year. Now, sir, why? Okay, Q2. Q2 ends in September. Q2 ends in September. Okay, now Q2 is ending in September. If you resign within 45 days from end of Q2, Q2 ends in September. If you want, if you resign within 45 days, 30 days, sorry, 31 days October, 14 days of November. If you resign by 14th November, you have to report Q2. If you resign by 14th November, you have to report Q2. If you resign after 14 November, you are resigning after 45 days from end of quarter. After 45 days from end of quarter, then you have to report Q2 and Q3. If you resign with up to 14 November, 14 November tak resign karte ho, you have to report sirf Q2, Q1, Q2. If you resign after 14 November, that is after 45 days from end of quarter, Quarter ended in September. 45 days will get over on 14 November. 31 days October, 14 days November. If you resign after 14 November, you have to do Q2 and Q3. And if you do Q1, Q2, Q3, you have to report on entire year as well. If you do Q1, Q2, Q3, you have to report entire year as well. So if you want to resign, you have to resign before 14th of November. If 14 November tak you resign, okay, you're done Q1, Q2, over. If you want to resign after 14 November, mandatorily, you have to complete Q3, Q4, then only you can resign. Repeat again. If you resign within 
45 days from end of quarter report that quarter if you resign after 45 days from end of quarter report that quarter and next quarter so suppose second quarter ended on september 30th within 45 days is 14th november if you resign till 14 november you have to report only that q2 q1 already done q1 q2 if you resign after 14 november you also have to do q3 and if you report q1 q2 q3 you have to mandatorily report the full year and the q4 so if i don't want to report the yearly financials i have to resign i have to resign till 14th november practically and this is only for listed companies sebi lodr is only for listed companies 6a very important 6a very important read this three point again one two three read this three points again one two three In amendment sheet which i have circulated there are examples also given if auditor resigns within 45 days from end of quarter you have to give a limited review report for that quarter if you resign after 45 days that quarter as well as next quarter and if you are done first second third mandatorily you have to do last quarter other conditions simple uh, in case of any concerns with management such as non-cooperation, non-availability of information, auditors should approach chairman of audit committee. So if management is not giving you documents, they are not cooperating, you tell to the chairman of audit committee. You tell to the chairman of audit committee and audit committee shall take up that concern directly. They should not wait till the next meeting comes. They should try to Tell to management, give the documents, whatever are missing. If auditor has any problem related to cooperation from management side or you're not getting the information, you have to tell to chairman of audit committee and that person or audit committee has to act immediately on it, not waiting till next meeting of audit committee. And if auditor proposes to resign, if auditor says you're not giving me this information, I will resign. The first you tell to the chairman of audit committee and tell him, sir, if information is not coming, I'll resign. Then the audit committee should bring it. He should bring it to the notice of audit committee along with all the documents. If auditor proposes to resign all concerns, what are the problems along with relevant documents, you should brought to the notice of audit committee. You should bring it to the notice of audit committee and audit committee shall act on this matter they should tell the management to give the documents as early as possible and cooperate if they still don't do you can resign and if at all they don't give you the required information you can give a disclaimer of opinion if at all they're not giving required information and you're not resigning you're not resigning but they're not giving you the information which you need you can disclaim the opinion if the possible effect is material and pervasive. The so disclaimer in case of non-receipt of information, if they don't give you information required to that extent, see the word, what is the word written? To that extent, they don't give you information to that extent, it is material and pervasive, then you can give a disclaimer of opinion. And if it is material but not pervasive, it's material but not pervasive, you want some information they're not giving, auditor is unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence and the possible effect is material but not pervasive. What you should do? Qualified. Yes, so it is material but not pervasive, qualified, material and pervasive, disclaimer. If you're not resigning and they don't give you information, you can give a qualified report or disclaimer. If you resign, you have to tell it to the chairman of audit committee along with the relevant documents. Why are you resigning? And then they will try to take actions. 
they will tell management give this document give what is missing if they still don't give you can resign or else you can give a qualified or a disclaimer of opinion now this is applicable pay attention this is applicable not only the auditor of listed company resigns auditor of material subsidiary of listed company resigns if auditor of material subsidiary resigns then also auditor has to give a notice to the chairman of the audit committee of listed company i repeat a limited is listed company a is listed company double a is a material subsidiary a is listed double a is material subsidiary you are auditor of double a imagine we are the auditors of double a if you resign or if you want to resign you have any problem you have to tell to we are auditors of double a we have to tell to audit committee of not double a audit committee of a limited you have to bring it to the notice all problems you have to bring it to the notice of audit committee of listed company the auditor of a limited resigning or auditor of double a resigning dono ke liye this rules are applicable auditor of a resigning auditor of double a resigning dono ke liye this applicable and double a wala will be reporting to audit committee of listed company okay this is fine most important for a listed company if you want to resign or material subsidiary of listed company if you want to resign if you are resigning within 45 days from end of quarter quarter ended uske within 45 days finish that quarter if you are resigning after 45 days from end of quarter say after 14th august ya yeah, after 14 november if you are resigning after 14th august you have to do q1 and q2 If you are resigning after 14 November, you have to do Q1, Q2, and Q3. And if you do Q1, Q2, Q3, you have to mandatorily do Q4. Understand it very properly. Next, obligation of listed company and its material subsidiary. This is this was auditor side. Now, what are the obligations of listed company upon resignation? the listed company shall obtain information from auditor if auditor resigns the company will obtain information from auditor in a format given in annex share a so auditor will fill annex share a give it to the management company so upon resignation the listed entity or material subsidiary should obtain information from auditor in a format given in annex share a during the period now suppose auditor says i want to resign auditor says i want to resign but he has to finish that quarter or he has to finish next quarter also auditor says i want to resign but if you are resigning within 45 days you have to complete that quarter if you are resigning after 45 days from end of that quarter you have to complete that and the next quarter if auditor is completing that quarter or next quarter management should cooperate with him it should not be like this auditor is going we don't give documents so during the period auditor proposes to resign see the word proposes to resign until he reports on that q1 or any other quarter the listed entity and the material subsidiary shall continue to provide all such documents and information now disclosure of audit committee's view to stock exchange see the word audit committee's view to stock exchange auditor resign hua uske upar auditor has resigned on that what are the audit committee's view what are the audit committee's view that has to be given to stock exchange the so one whenever auditor resigns or you have to obtain company company has to obtain details from auditor in annex share a second if auditor proposes to resign he says i want to resign but i has to complete this quarter or has to complete the next quarter then till the time is completing that management should cooperate with him an audit committee has to give their views 
crypto stock exchange regarding auditor's resignation regarding auditor's resignation how much time may as soon as possible not later than 24 hours after the next audit committee ka meeting auditor resign next audit committee meeting mein discussions would have happened why he resigned what to do so not later than 24 hours after the date of such audit committee's meeting okay so over here if auditor resigns auditor will tell to company company will tell to stock exchange within 24 hours they will tell with detailed reasons see one thing auditor resigned auditor tells to company company will tell to stock exchange the reasons for resigning wo oh, sirf reasons diya now later audit committee's meeting will come later audit committee ka meeting will come audit committee will discuss why auditor resign and they will give their views to stock exchange pay attention auditor resigning he will give reasons to the company company will give that reasons to stock exchange within 24 hours auditor told me i will tell it to stock exchange now next meeting of our audit committee next meeting of our audit committee there will be discussions on this and audit committee will then give their views to the stock exchange okay this is basically given and if audit committee is not there bod has to fulfill all these things and now this is if auditor is resigning this all if auditor is resigning if auditor becomes disqualified under section 141 subsection 3 ah uh, now remember section 141 subsection 3 disqualification of auditor 141 subsection 4 after being appointed if auditor becomes disqualified later is deemed to have vacated his place of office as auditor the 141 subsection 4 says if you later after appointed later if you become disqualified or if you are falling in that 141 subsection 3 you are deemed to have vacated your place of office as an auditor so if you are getting disqualified under section 141 this all will not apply this is only when auditor wants to resign this is only when auditor wants to resign okay this is basically given and next is professional ethics chapter 18 the last amendment then we'll go to all the questions keep smiling you look great i know you all are tensed exams are very near but i'll tell you one thing don't stop keep your efforts going till the exams are over don't stop in between now chapter 18 professional ethics what's the amendment there's a word network they came out with icai says network should be registered with icai so the network kya hai what is this network Now do one thing. You go to KPMG's website. You just type in Google KPMG India. Type in Google KPMG India, and you go over there. Go to services. You'll find all advisory services. They have basically KPMG India LLP. KPMG India Assurance, or basically KPMG India LLP, is there. If you go to their website, you'll find services. Me all advisory services. So assurance signing. If you see a audit report signed by KPMG, it's not in the name of KPMG. It's not in the name of KPMG. It will be BSR and Associates. So KPMG has partnered with BSR and Associates, or you can say BSR and Associates is a network firm of KPMG. Same with Deloitte. Yeah, I did my article ship with Deloitte. Now, if you see audit report signed, Deloitte may they have one firm, Deloitte Haskins and Sales in India. They have Deloitte Haskins and Sales one firm plus they have a network firms 
like CC Choksi and company, A Ferguson, so Ferguson and company, they are all network firms of Deloitte. So many big fours, many big fours, they are not registered as a firm separately in India. They have tied up with the existing firms. When I started my articleship, I was registered not with Deloitte. I was registered with CC Choksi and company. So CC Choksi and company, A Ferguson and company, they are Deloitte only, but they are known by their Indian names. So what did this big four do? The big four has taken over the existing Indian firms and kept their name, kept their name. But uh, when CC Choksi goes for taking the audit, when CC Choksi goes for taking audit, they will say, we are coming from Deloitte. So for taking audit, they use the brand name Deloitte. So CC Choksi and company, AF Ferguson and company, they all use Deloitte brand name. They are network firms of Deloitte. Plus, they have their own softwares for documentation. So if you go to CC Choksi and company, if you go to AF Ferguson and company, they use the same software which is provided by Deloitte. The Deloitte is an international organization, an international firm. India may, they tied up with CC Choksi, AF Ferguson, same way KPNG tied up with BSR and Associate. EY, Ernest and Young, they tied up with SR Bartley Boy. If you see a balance sheet signed by SR Bartley Boy, that's EY only. So many times, this big force, they don't work in their name. They don't work in their name. They work in Indian network firms name. So there are network firms on key. CC Choksi and company, A Ferguson and company, they are signing in that name. The signing will not be KPMG. It's not KPMG India Limited signing. No, it's signed by BSR and Associates. Do one thing. Go to that Satyam Wale audit report. Satyam audit report, you see, usme KPMG ka signature nahi hai. BSR and Associates ka signature is there. Now the thing is, now the thing is, ICAI wants to take some action. Now who is the auditor? ICAI wants to take some action. Like say for example, in Satyam case, you'll say KPMG was the auditor. KPMG says, sir, BSR and Associates is the auditor. KPMG says BSR and Associate is the auditor. You ban BSR and Associates. Now BSR and Associates is just a name. Actually, quality control procedures, documentation, everything, the use of KPMG. So KPMG has told them do in this way, this way. Unka software they use, they use like that. So they are network firms. BSR and Associate is a network firm. So now what happened in Satyam case, in Satyam case, ICAI wanted to take action against entire KPMG. They want to take KPMG ke samne action. KPMG is telling sir, BSR and associate is auditor. You take action against BSR and associate. Now if they take action against BSR and associate, KPMG can tie up with another Indian firm and continue the operation. The problem was, Problem was if Deloitte ko ban karna hai. Now Deloitte says, sir, we have not signed. CC Choksi is signed. Ban CC Choksi. They will continue their work through A Ferguson. So Deloitte is associated with CC Choksi, A Ferguson. So after A ko ban kiya, they will continue the work through other. ICAI wants to ban the entire Deloitte, entire KPMG, entire EY. They are telling. You need to have a registered network. So yes, are networks. Deloitte is not one firm. It has network and the red. So Deloitte works under the name of Deloitte Haskins and Sales. There are few audits they have in their name. They work under the name of CC Choksi. They work under the name of A Ferguson. Imagine. So Deloitte works in the name of Deloitte Haskins and Sales, A Ferguson and Company, CC Choksi and Company, Sub Deloitte. But now, if something happened wrong, 
say one audit done by CC Choksi and company, SEBI found problems or say for example, Nafra found problems. They are telling, sir, ban CC Choksi. Other two can still continue the work. ICAI wants the whole network, whole network to be banned. Iske liye, the concept of network came. This is new thing which is added. The purpose is to ban entire network. Action should be taken on entire network because there are three same you. You're using different names. When you want to get work, when you want to get work, you don't say I'm coming from CC Choksi. You say I'm coming from Deloitte. You don't say I'm coming from A. Ferguson and Company. We are from Deloitte. The work chie Deloitte, Deloitte, Deloitte. But when penalties come, then you say no, no, sir. We are not Deloitte. We are CC Choksi. When you wanted work, you said we are network firms of Deloitte, and you got the audit. But when penalties are coming, you are saying, no, sir, Pure Deloitte ko ban mat karo, only this. This is different. Deloitte is different. So they are telling no. They are telling full network should be punishable. And that's why ICAI wants all network, bigger one, should be registered. And uske the network firms, so Deloitte is a bigger network. Uske under there are firms, everything needs to be registered with ICAI so that they can take action. I tell you KPMG India LLP, KPMG India LLP is not registered with ICAI. They don't sign anything. They don't sign a single audit report. KPMG India LLP, they don't sign. Who signs? BSR and associate signs. The problem here is when BSR wanted work, they say we are a part of KPMG. But when penalties come, KPMG says different, different. So they want entire networks to be registered with ICI, network firms to be registered with ICI. So Deloitte needs to be registered. Under Deloitte, whichever firms come, they also need to be registered. And penalties can be levied on entire network. I hope you're clear. Okay, the big fours don't work in their names. They had many network firms. Now ICI wants to ban, suppose sometimes not one firm, but entire network. How do they do? They want network to be registered with them. Okay, so now first of all, let's understand the meaning of the word network. First understand the meaning of the word network. Your clause two, clause three, they are all fine. They are the same one, which is done by us so there are no changes there are no changes yahan se the changes starts yahan se the changes are starting meaning of network now what is a network network is a larger structure larger structure that is aimed at cooperation clearly aimed at profit of cost sharing now tell me software used by A. Ferguson, software used by CC Choksi and company, software used by Deloitte, Haskins and Sales, all that softwares for documentation they're using is same. That is aimed at profit of cost sharing or there are common ownership. Like Deloitte is a common owner in all firms. Common control or management, common quality control procedures, yeah, SA 220 quality control procedures. If you have a common quality control procedure, common business strategy, common brand name, when you go for taking work, CC Choksi says, ah, we are Deloitte. A Ferguson says, we are Deloitte. The common brand name or significant professional resources they share. Okay, so what is this network? Larger structure, larger structure that is aimed at cooperation. And it is clearly to have profit or cost sharing or common ownership or common control or management, common quality control procedures, SA 220, common business strategy, a common brand name, or they share significant resources. Okay, resources are being shared, like that software. It's a resource that is being shared, or sometimes say offices are shared or employees are shared. Like say Bombay office needs more employee. Ahmedabad office in a base there. Now Ahmedabad was CC Choksi. Bombay is A Ferguson. Still, we sent 
actually they ultimately are part of Deloitte. So Deloitte is a network under which there are network firms. Okay, and see, I tell you, Deloitte can be there a complex structure. They have Deloitte Haskins and Sales as a firm in India. They have a company Deloitte Touch to Mass Private Limited. Deloitte Touch to Mass Private Limited is for advisory works. Remember, chartered accountants can practice as corporates. They can create a company, but are not for doing audit, but for advisory works. So they have Deloitte Touch to Mass for advisory. They have a Deloitte Haskins and Sales firm. Plus, they have CC Choxy, they have AF Ferguson, many, but they all are ultimately Deloitte Kebabs. Okay, so this is network. It's a larger structure. That's network. Now, what is network firm? Individuals or a firm that belongs to the network. The network mean network firms means the firms or entities that belong to network. So if I want to have an example of the word network, I can say said Deloitte is a network. Okay, what is a network firm? So I can say CC Choxy and Company is a network firm. Or I can say AF Ferguson and Company is a network firm. That's network firm, Ferguson. Ferguson and company is networking. Don't go my handwriting. I don't have a proper podium with me. That's why this is like this. I'm not at my studio today. I'm doing recording from my native place. Okay, so network and network firm. Network firm means the firm or entity that belongs to the network. And now ICAI wants that whenever something wrong is done, we should be able to ban the entire network and uski sari network firms. Don't tell me CC Choxy did wrong. When you wanted client, CC Choxy said we are Deloitte. A Ferguson also said we are Deloitte. But when penalty come, then you say we are not Deloitte. We are CC Choxy. We are not Deloitte. We are A Ferguson. Then you say we are separate. No. If you are network firms of Deloitte, ICAI can ban all network firms. Now, Uskili, they came out with this concept. The meaning of word network important. Meaning of word network is important. Network firm. Okay, now concept. What they're telling to enhance the ability to provide services, firms frequently form a larger structure with other firms and entities. You form a network with other firms. This larger structures create a network depending on facts and circumstances. Like, depending on facts and circumstances, like your common quality control procedures, okay, your network. Your common ownership, your network. You have sharing significant resources. Now, word significant. You have to understand. It depends on facts and circumstances. So, sir, if I share two people sometimes, is it significant? Depends on facts and circumstances. There's no underlined thing. So whether this larger structure create a network depends on facts and circumstances, does not depend on whether the firms and entities are separately legal and distinct. So CC Choxy and Company, A Ferguson and Company, Deloitte Haskins and Sales, as such individual firms but yeah they share common quality control procedures they share the common software for documentation they share the common rules and regulation so they are network firms they are network firms so you form a larger network basically to have some benefits and whether it's a network or not depends on facts and circumstances. So to small CS, small child accountant firm, to small child accountant firm bought one software together and they're sharing one software, just one software. So two small child accountant firm, they bought one software. They're sharing that one software. So is it a network? Now, one small software you basically share, practically you would not say a network. 
See, what is a network? Yeah, network and yeah, it depends on facts and circumstances. But yeah, CC Choksi, A. Ferguson, when they go for taking work, they say we are Deloitte. They have common softwares. They have common quality control procedures. They have common norms followed, which is given by Deloitte. So they are network. My other firm, me and my friend started a firm. When he needs some resources, I send my article. When I need some resources, he gives his article. Sometimes. So they are not network. It depends on facts and circumstances. Significant word. Why are again? Significant sharing of resources. That is also to be seen. Now, judgment as to whether a larger structure is a network. Judgment as to whether larger structure is a network shall be made in the light of whether a reasonable and informed third party. A reasonable and informed third party will feel that you are associate. If some third party feels you are associate, so generally you will be a network. Whether your network or not, think from third party's angle. Whether your network or not, think from third party's angle. Okay, now, where the larger structure is aimed at cooperation and it's aimed at profit or cost sharing, it will be a network. If sharing of cost is limited only to development of audit methodologies or manuals or training courses, it's only for short thing. Like say, for example, two firms, two firms are there, uh, me and my friend's firm. Now to give training to our articles, we have a combined training of my firm and your firm's article. So my firm is there. My friend's firm is there to give training to article. We combine so that two times timing is not going. Does it mean we are network? Then they say that's not such a big thing. Two firms might be combining their articles just for training. They are not network. It depends on facts and circumstances majorly. Whether you're using a common brand name, majorly. Whether you're having quality control procedures, whether you're having all documentation common, don't think two firms sharing few resources or having a common training of their article, they are not network. So common control, common ownership deemed to be network, common quality control procedure deemed to be network, common business strategy deemed to be network, common brand name deemed to be network. They are just telling this is all kind of network. If you share a significant resources, network significant resources is network now uh, sometimes uh, you write in your letter it's or visiting card a member form of deloitte if you write in your visiting cards or letter it that you are a member form of deloitte then pakka you are a network firm so even though firm does not belong to network does not use common brand name it may appear that it belongs to a network if it gives a reference in its stationery. If you give a reference in your stationery that you are a member firm of Deloitte, this, that, then in that case, you will be treated as a member only. So you should take care that if you are a member, then only you write it. Otherwise, you don't write it. Okay, significant sharing of resources. Now, what is significant sharing of resources is common systems, client data, billing softwares, partners and staff, partners and staff, technical departments, you have common technical departments, audit methodology, training courses. If you have this common, this many things. Now, just giving training to articles together does not make it significant the word significant and it is to be interpreted on fact to fact case by case basis so they just say professional resources include common systems partners and staff partners are exchanged staff are exchanged technical departments audit methodologies training courses etc now just see where 
the shared resources are limited to common audit methodology and audit manuals and no exchange of personnel just common audit methodologies or we have some audit manuals no exchange of personnel it is unlikely that shared resources will be significant unlikely most likely it's not a significant if you're not sharing people you're just sharing common audit methodology but again i tell you it's all on case to case basis okay the important was the definition of the word network now forms of network forms of network network can be created as a mutual entity a network will not carry out any practice the like kpmg india limited they will not do any audits or suppose they don't do it that's just a mutual entity created it is created as a mutual entity and that network itself may not be carrying out any professional practice so kpmg india limited they will not do any audits okay network firms will do so they network can be as a mutual entity like mutual entity create karo that will not do anything firms will do and the network main so yahan pe it's kind of we have a network and under that we have network firms the network how do we constitute it can be a mutual entity which is just a facilitator helper it's a facilitator for the constituents means the firms which are associated with network constituents means aapke parts constituents means parts the network can be constituted as a mutual entity which will act as a facilitator it will not carry out network will not do anything this network will not do audit audits will be done by network firms Now, how do i form network network can be a partnership firm network can be llp network can be a company network can be this mean network network can be partnership firm llp or a company it's fine they will not do any work network firms will do it and network shall network firms network firms can be sole proprietor or partnership firms and a firm is allowed to join only one network now this is important firm is allowed to join only one network 67.6.7 is important firm is allowed to join only one network if i am a member of deloitte suppose deloitte has created a network uske andar network firms if i am a member of deloitte i cannot be member of any other network and firms having common partners firms having common partners they have to join one network only firms having common partner need to join one network only so suppose abc are partners in abc and company adf are partners in adf if abc adf we have a common partner a both this firms can be a part of one network so abc is part of one network adf is part of another network not allowed abc member of say deloitte adf same member firm of kpmg not allowed if common partners are there you should be a part of one network again i tell you purpose of this network is just to ensure you are able to take actions against entire network today kpmg india limited is not registered with icai icai can't take any actions against kpmg india bsr and associate is signing they can take actions only against bsr imagine under kpmg there are five firms if they want to take actions against all five firms so they have to take actions against the entire network so all networks the main uske andar uske network firms need to be registered 
So you have to register a network with ICAI and network ka name will be and affiliates. Network will not do anything. Network will not do anything. Uske network forms will be there. So network can be Deloitte. Network can be Deloitte. Network firms, CC Choksi and Company, A Ferguson and Company, Deloitte Haskins and Sales. Yeah, they are doing in three names signing. CC Choksi, A Ferguson, Deloitte Haskins and Sales, they are network firms. Deloitte is a network. So Deloitte has to get registered with ICI and uska naam Deloitte and Affiliates. The network ka naam will be and affiliates, not and company, not and associates. The network's name will be and affiliates. A network, if it's suppose, network is a partnership firm, AB and affiliates. It's a LLP, AB affiliates LLP. Some examples are given. So network main. Network can be either partnership, LLP, company. It should be registered with ICI and affiliates should be there in its name. Uski affiliates are there, means the firms. Okay. Now, you have to get first the name approved from ICI. So, network has to be created as a separate entity and uska name should be first approved from ICAI. So you have to get the name approved from ICI. Uske liye forms are given. And a name approved doesn't mean the network is created. Doesn't mean the network is created. No, 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 no. Name approval is not that it is created. Name approval is one thing. Then you have to get it registered with ICI. Name approval is not registration. See, when you want to form a company, when you want to form a company, first you have to see whether the name is available. So first, we have to get the name approved. And then we have to get the incorporation of company done. The first is just name available hai, nahi hai. and then you move on to the next step, which is getting your company registered. The same is you first get the network ka name approved, then you register a network with ICI. So they have just given form numbers, etc. That is fine. Mere approval of name does not entitle the network to carry on practice in its own name. After the name is approved, after the name is approved, ICAI will keep that name Deloitte and Affiliates or Deloitte LLP and uh, Affiliates. They will keep it reserved for three months. Within three months, you have to get the network registered with ICI. Registration of network is mandatory. Registration of network is mandatory. You have to get it mandatorily registered with ICI. Now, sir, can I be a network with firms outside India? Can I be a network of firms outside India? Firms outside India, can they be a network firms of my network? It is possible that they have given us some forms are there. So proprietary individual members partnership shall be permitted to join network with entities outside India as well. If you want to join network with entities outside India, that is also allowed, but only thing they want. Network should be registered with ICAI. And outside wala hai, to waha pe institute, we have a tie up with them. Unke saath you are registered. So network should be registered and network firms are there. So if Deloitte LLP or KPMG India LLP and affiliates, KPMG India LLP and affiliates is now registered with ICI, ICAI can take actions against them. And when I take actions against network, automatically it's with all network firms applicable. Automatically, it's applicable to all network firms. Okay, now imagine CC Choksi and Company was a part of Deloitte. CC Choksi and Company was part of Deloitte. Now they want to join EY. They will move out from Deloitte's network. They will move out from Deloitte's network and now they will join EY's network. Ernest and Young. 
is it allowed yeah allowed so entry exit from network you are a network firm of deloitte now you want to become a network firm of ebay entry exit from network should also be informed to icai by the network so change in constitution of network entry exit is to be informed to the icai on account of entry exit is to be informed to ICI within 30 days. And the networks will also comply with all ethical requirements, advertising, bad advertising also they can't do. Now don't tell sir, Deloitte doesn't do audit. Once you are registered with ICAI, all things apply to you. Now as of now, see, i just tell you one thing. Earlier, you might have seen Many events were sponsored by KPMG and KPMG K. Kai bar apne chote chote banners you might have seen. The reason was KPMG India LLP. KPMG India LLP was not practicing in India. They are saying we are not signing and they are not registered with ICI. They had BSR and associates who were signing. But now when KPMG gets registered with ICI network, network should be registered with ICI. There will be a ban on them also. They will be, they will be required to comply ethical requirements, all that things. And they will also be required to follow the schedules of ICI. Okay, so they're telling ethical requirements they are required to comply. Uh, Plus, if one firm of network is a statutory auditor, one firm of network, say CC Choksi is a statutory auditor, associate A. Ferguson, CC Choksi, A. Ferguson, part of Deloitte. A. Ferguson cannot be internal auditor or bookkeeper. The network firm, so section 144, section 144, directly or indirectly, you should not provide the following services if you're auditor. If you're an auditor, section 144 wale services, you should not provide. Your network firms also should not provide. You should not provide. Your network firms also should not provide. Rotation. Yeah, firms can be there for two terms of five years. Firms can be there for two terms of five years. 139, subsection 234. Company audit, section 139, subsection 234, rotation of auditor. Now, CC Choksi gone after two terms. Can I call A. Ferguson? Same network ka dusra firm. CC Choksi, 10 years over. Now, can I call A. Ferguson? They said, no. Rotation applicable, network firm you cannot appoint. No member firm of network can be appointed. Network firm will not be Allowed. Networks may advertise the network to the extent permitted by the guidelines issued. The network may advertise network. So, network ki advertise karo to the extent permitted by advertisement guidelines. So, we have your part one, first schedule, clause six and seven. Part one, first schedule, professional ethics, clause six and seven, also what is allowed, what is not allowed is given to you. Part one, first schedule, first schedule, part one, clause six, seven. Okay, oh yeah. And consent of client will be deemed. So I don't have to tell to client that I am a network firm of this. It's a deemed thing. So client ka consent is a deemed thing and network can have their own bylaws, rules for internal management. Network can have their bylaws, which is rules for internal management. The simple words, what was important? What was important over here? I just go up. So one thing is the definition. This is important. What do you mean by network? It's a larger structure aimed at cooperation. Clearly aimed at Profit sharing, cost sharing, common ownership, common control management, common quality control procedure, common business strategy, common brand name, sharing significant professional resources. That's network. 
Okay. Now, what is actually whether it's a network or not depends on facts and circumstances. So I can just take point one important. Point one important and think from third party's angle. Point two important. Think from third party's angle. Point two important. Baki, this all is same thing. What is given in definition? Uh, what is significant resources? It's explained in point nine. What is significant resources? Explain in nine that can be said important. Network will be constituted as a mutual entity. They will not do anything. Firms will do. Okay, that is fine. Uh, yeah, this is important. One firm allowed to join one network. Common partners wali firm have to join a same network. Common partners firm has to join same network. Network's name will be and affiliates network ka name. The main network. Uske under there are network firms and affiliates. First, you have to get a name approved. Once your name is approved, ICAI will keep the name for three months. Within three months, you have to get the network registered with ICI. Registration important. I've taken it. And that's it. Entry exit, you have to inform to ICI. And if you are the statutory auditor, network firm cannot provide services given under section 144. You are currently the auditor. Rotation may network firm cannot be appointed. On rotation, network firm cannot be appointed. Okay, now moving ahead. This is just they were given the framework, bylaws, internal rules and regulation. Tick J is important. They can have internal rules and regulations of network with regards to appointment of managing committee, administration of network, fees they get from network firms, dispute settlement, development of training materials. This is just simple. Okay, this is done about network going to your questions. Going to your questions. Okay, the what all amendments were there? In your definition of government company, they explain that the word paid up capital should be interpreted as total voting power. Second, uh, we have basically your audit committee and corporate governance whenever an auditor is resigning if you resign within 45 days from end of quarter you have to finish that quarter if you resign means q1 ends in june if i resign till 14th august i have to complete q1 if i resign after 14th august i have to complete q1 and q2 and if i have done q1 q2 q3 mandatorily i have to do q4 i can't resign before that uh, section 197 subsection 16 says auditor has to report whether the remuneration is within the limit so that will come under your 143 3 ka reporting and concept of network as schema now going to your case based mcq now actually i was expecting much better cases from ICI but these are nothing but small small questions already given in ICI material they put it in MCQ form if you see full case one it's not one case it's five different things only I was expecting better cases full fledged kind of cases these are nothing but short short questions they say it's a case it's not actually a case pretty simple if you see this first one first it's actually five separate things given it's five separate things which are given okay why sn associates chartered accountant firm what they're telling they get their website www.ysnassociates.com the color is very bright. Okay, the website, it's clause six, part one, first schedule. Yeah, professional ethics, clause six, part one, first schedule. Website, color is very bright. Any color allowed? Yeah. Runs on a push technology. Yes, website has to be on push, mm, purple. 
push technology pull technology it should be on it should be on push technology yeah pull technology push correct you have to go push it you go inside then only you get it the colors are very bright that's fine push technology is fine names of partner major client were displayed on website you cannot give names of client you cannot give the names of partner is fine yeah names of partner is allowed major client ke name and fees cannot be given on your website major client and fees cannot be given the only problem over here is major client ke names are displayed that's a problem okay we'll come to the case now see this is not seriously a full fledged case it's now first thing now second dusra aa gaya cay accepted his appointment as tax auditor commences the tax audit within 2 days of appointment you're appointed as tax auditor within 2 days you started without communicating previous auditor ah uh, clause 8 part 1 first schedule if you accept appointment as auditor without communicating with previous auditor you are guilty of professional misconduct so you are appointed as tax auditor commence the audit within 2 days then you realized you did not send communication to previous auditor guilty to rectify mistake before signing audit report you send a registered post before signing report you send a registered report but that's not okay you have to send it before before basically you're accepting the audit if you accept the audit without communicating previous auditor you are guilty so now see first and second they are actually totally different third cas provides management consultancy and he ad also advise them on portfolio management services you give portfolio advised on portfolio management portfolio advisor advise them on portfolio management fine and whereby he managed portfolio of some clients oh, now this is based on section 2 subsection 2 clause 4 section 2 subsection 2 clause 4 this is your deemed to be in practice may the list was given when you say to be deemed to be in practice now portfolio advisory is fine even if you are practicing see if you do following things you are deemed to be in practice you should hold cop list was given 26 items this professional ethics again if you are deemed to be in practice you are covered in that 26 items you are deemed to be in practice you should hold cop now the thing is even if you are holding cop managing portfolio is not allowed portfolio management service is not allowed investment advisory is fine you cannot handle the portfolios of client this is wrong you manage portfolio of client is wrong now tarak a student approached you now you are managing stock market ke portfolios he feels you are expert yeah and he wants some guidance from you to tarak a student approached cs to take guidance and you started giving personal tuitions to him now you are managing portfolio of client that's wrong even with cop portfolio management not allowed that is wrong now you are giving personal tuitions to some students related to this to tarak along with other aspirants you are giving some personal tuition 3 days in a week for 1 hour in a day 3 days in a week 1 hour okay the 3 hours every week 3 hours every week you are giving personal tuitions allowed general permission is there section uh, sorry not section regulation 190a regulation 190 capital a you are allowed to give private tuitions generally permitted no need to take any permission from icsa this is fine Three hours every week. You are giving training to some people on chargeable basis. That's fine. Private tutorship, but portfolio management service is not allowed even with holding COP. Next, why is an associate is appointed to conduct a statutory audit? 
X, Y, Z is required to appoint internal auditors. Now, if you are appointed a statutory auditor, company needs internal auditor. I, A is the internal auditor. So, Y, S, and associate is statutory auditor. I, A is internal auditor. You asked I, A to provide direct assistance. Now, question. Can you take direct assistance from internal auditor? SA 610. SA 610. Can you take direct assistance from internal auditor? Yes. Direct assistance from internal auditor is allowed. But there are few cases where you should not take the direct assistance. There are a few things like where risk of material misstatement is high. There you should not take their help. So there are a few areas where significant judgments are involved. Where significant judgments are involved, don't take their help. So they have given SA 610. Now, you asked IA to provide direct assistance regarding evaluating significant accounting estimate. Oh, this is significant judgments significant accounting estimate you want help in that area that's not allowed that's not allowed significant accounting estimate ka evaluation this is where significant judgments are involved you can't take their help this is wrong and he also seeks assistance in assembling the information related to exceptions in confirmation process we do direct confirmation we do direct confirmation. Direct confirmation process may some assistance you take for assembling file. That's fine. This is not allowed. This is fine. You cannot take assistance for significant accounting estimate ka evaluation, but you can take assistance for assembling file related to resolving the exceptions in confirmation process. That's fine. SC 610 few areas where you are not allowed to take assistance risk is high significant judgments are involved work has been done by him only i can't take and wherever i feel like he doesn't have proper skill competence i should not take so here can i take the work for first evaluating significant accounting estimate you can't take his assistance for assembling the file for confirmation process yes allowed Next, uh, one more. Uh, XYZ is seeking advice of YS to appoint IA for conducting GST audit. Now, who is IA? For appointing CAIA. Now, IA is internal auditor. IA is internal auditor. Can internal auditor also become a GST auditor? Can internal auditor also become GST auditor? Answer is no. If you check our chapter of professional ethics, if you check our chapter of professional ethics, in the last, they have given some significant judgments or significant rulings. Uski and we have written, internal auditor cannot become a GST auditor. GST is kind of a statute related. The statutory auditor, internal auditor cannot be same. So can IA be appointed as GST auditor? No. Now see, there are five questions. And if you see there are five separate cases, it's not one. Huh? Name same rakha. You just kept the name same. Otherwise, it's five separate things. So first, direct assistance for evaluating significant management or accounting estimates. That's not allowed. Now you can take assistance for assembling the information. So that is A is the answer. Direct assistance. B. Uh, you're giving private tutorship. You're giving private tutorship. Is that private tutorship fine? Regulation 190A. Here are regulation 190A. You are not guilty. You can give private tutorship. You're giving 21 hours a month, that's fine. Unlimited is allowed. Private tutorship is fine. You are giving this, that is okay. Not a problem. Private tutorship. Next, before signing tax audit report, you obtain a postal acknowledgement. That's not okay. 
before accepting audit you should have done it so you will be guilty clause 8 part 1 for schedule whether internal auditor can take gst audit no so a ia is an internal auditor not eligible to take gst audit and the last one website website problem is your names of partner and names of client were given partner is still fine names of client along with fees charge these two things names of client and fees charge cannot be given the major clients can name were displayed that is wrong the answer is no is it in compliance it's not in compliance practically this is not a full-fledged case study this is nothing but small questions clubbed together keeping same name okay case study two i told you i was expecting a bit more in case study and i was also expecting some covid related treatments but they're not given i'll come to it at the end but what i feel i'll come to it at the end next ans and associates ans and associates have been appointed as statutory auditor of delco limited there are two subsidiaries okay you're appointed as auditor of delco there are two subsidiaries auditor of two subsidiaries soul limited soccer limited are xyz and associate you are an ans however company has not consolidated company has not consolidated soccer limited okay one company is not consolidated you should give edwards opinion all figures are wrong all figures are wrong and you know it so one subsidiary is not consolidated all figures will be wrong okay the auditor asked the management to disclose the reason for non-consolidation in notes auditor are considering implication on their responsibility and the management's responsibility and in the audit of such financials okay simple words one subsidiary not consolidated now with respect to non-consolidation how should auditor deal he should give adverse opinion how he should deal all figures are wrong one subsidiary is not consolidated only next what are the auditor's responsibility with regards to corresponding figures okay what is corresponding figures what do you mean by the word corresponding figures auditor's responsibility for corresponding figures previous years previous years figures now auditor's opinion previous years figures now which may be sa 710 two approaches sa 710 two approaches corresponding figure approach comparative financial statement approach under your corresponding figure approach under corresponding figure approach previous year's figures are a part of current year's financial statement previous year's figures are a part of current year's financial statement you don't have to specifically mention that previous year's figures are audited it is a part of current year's financial statement you don't have to specifically mention that previous year is audited and your report is on both okay the auditor should refer to each period no 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 that is comparative financial statement auditor need to report on current year financials only no under corresponding figure you report on both you report on current year figure previous year figure but you don't have to mention previous year is audited the auditor shall not refer to corresponding figures except our previous year's report may there was a modification matter is unresolved then you tell yes this is correct this is correct c point b uh, what is the reporting responsibility if prior period financials are not audited if prior period financials are not audited you have to write it in other matter paragraph other matter paragraph you have to write the previous year's figures were unaudited so you have to report in other matter paragraph so just see the options b report on other matter paragraph that's correct c 
you have to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence about opening balance yeah correct that is sa 510 so sa 510 and this is sa 710 opening balances are correct or not you have to obtain evidence they were unaudited you have to check opening the opening balances are correct or not that is you have to check as per 510 710 says previous years were unaudited you have to write it in other matter paragraph answer is both b and c i tell you all questions of rtp are covered in our material there is nothing new in rtp but once you go through it you are comfortable next Preparation of financial statement in accordance with applicable financial reporting framework is a responsibility of management, correct? Management has to prepare financial statement in accordance with applicable financial reporting framework and auditors should write about it in auditor's report. So where do you disclose it? Auditor writes about it in auditor's report. We have a management responsibility paragraph. In management responsibility paragraph, this should come. The auditor should describe it in management responsibility section of the audit report. So where this should be disclosed, audit report, management responsibility section. Next, if the auditor of Delco Limited decides to give qualified or adverse opinion, if you're giving qualified or adverse opinion which of the following is true with regards to use of emphasis of matter so if you're giving qualified or adverse which is true for emphasis of matter question can i give emphasis of matter along with a qualified report Can I give emphasis of matter? Emphasis of matter is drawing attention. We draw attention to something which is adequately there in financials. Financials are correct. We are drawing attention. Can I give emphasis along with qualified adverse? Yes, we can. A qualified is for some other matter. Say qualified is for inventory. Inventory valued at cost, not cost or NRV, whichever lower. Inventory valued at cost for that I am giving qualified emphasis can be for other things. There was a loss due to fire. I'm drawing attention. So inventory is qualified. That's a different thing. Emphasis is for loss due to fire. They've shown properly. I'm just drawing attention. So can emphasis of matter come along with qualified or adverse? Yes. But uh, matter giving rise to qualification or adverse opinion is different and emphasis is for some different matter. Okay, check. The auditor cannot add EOM as the mat on any matter as a qualified or adverse opinion is given. No, EOM can be added if auditor's opinion is neither qualified nor adverse in respect to that particular matter. See the word. So matter for which, pay attention, matter for which I'm giving EOM, that is different. That matter, that's no qualification. Qualification is for inventory. EOM is for loss due to fire. They are different things. So EOM can be added if auditor's opinion is neither qualified nor adverse for that particular matter. The matter for which I'm giving EOM, that matter is not, for that matter, I'm not giving qualified. The matter is fundamental to the user's understanding of financial statements. Fine, this is done. Now, next, independent MCQs. During the audit, you find out a fraud of 101 lakhs. 101 lakhs, more than one crore. Section 143, subsection 12. Section 143, subsection 12. If you find out a fraud exceeding one crore, you have to report to CG. Let's see. So the answer is A. As per Companies Act, as the amount is more than 100 lakh, auditors should report the matter to BOD within two days, asking them to reply within 45 days. After completion, you should forward your report to central government along with the reply received. 
this answer others are fine before concluding audit before concluding audit there was difference of opinion between audit committee and the auditors ah this is good question 12th one is a good question there's a difference of opinion between you auditor and the audit committee as to amongst the following which should be taken into account to determine the key audit matters which should be taken into account to determine key audit matters now what are key audit matters 701 sa701 how do i decide key audit matters how do i decide key audit matters in your requirements the first requirement identifying key audit matters how do i identify three things were given key audit matters are the matters where risk of material misstatement is high so the risk is high second where significant judgments are involved and third significant transactions which have occurred during the year effect of audit effect on audit of significant transaction three things were there the areas which auditor feels are high risky significant judgments are involved and third significant transaction took place during the year now see the option the effect on audit of significant transaction yes they are key audit matters they are key audit. areas of high risk now see as assessed and reported by management expert no 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 areas of high risk which auditor feels if auditor feels a high risk area that's a key audit matter key audit matters are those where you take extra care you have basically devoted more time over there the risk which you feel the areas where auditor feels there's a high risk areas of high risk reported by management expert need not necessarily be a key audit matter and significant auditors judgment relating to the significant management judgment yes that is basically a key audit matter the key audit matter how do i identify so in your requirements sa701 the first point identification of key audit matter one they are the areas where there's a high risk auditor things not management expert auditor second where significant judgments are involved estimation uncertainty is there and third significant transactions which took place during the period okay the answer is this one is correct c is three is correct that is a one and three next going to the next question descriptive okay mcq is over descriptive 30 marks mcq in your paper 70 marks is descriptive i tell you frankly don't go in search of doing mcqs only many students i find they try to see search online or oh, what are the mcqs available let me do mcqs mcqs are nothing but from theories and the illustrations which we have done if you see this whatever case based mcq is given they were directly the questions which are there in our material so don't go for searching for mcqs here and there just do the material given to you in a proper way <sighs> next question mea limited is a listed company they were joint auditors they issued engagement letter to all of them fine the company yes there are joint auditors they have given the letter of engagement to all of them x was not clear he requested for slight change in terms of his engagement okay x was not clear he requested for some change letter of engagement contains letter of engagement contains yeah, say, objective of audit scope of audit auditor's responsibility framework which is applicable and the way the report is to be given way the report is to be given what is the discrepancy in engagement letter question what is the discrepancy in engagement letter now letter of engagement should have five things 
objective of audit scope of audit management's responsibility auditors responsibility framework applicable and the way they want to report from us now what is missing objective is there scope is there management responsibility is missing yes management responsibility is missing let's go to the solutions given by them see how to write the answers how to write the answers always first para is explaining the provision second para correlating the question and the provision third is conclusion this is actually they have given the provision i will say this as first para this is the explanation and however this is the conclusion i'll do it in three parts this is first this is second this is third the letter of engagement as per sa 210 it should include objective scope responsibility of auditor responsibility of management framework applicable and how they want the report now what is missing is they have not specified the responsibility of management that is missing the letter did not specify the responsibilities of management so sa 210 says letter of engagement should include this in current case this is not given so this is the problem i hope you're clear discrepancy in letter of engagement now if someone writes only concluding paragraph if you write this if you write this only last marks will not be there Actually, out of five marks, three marks are for the first part, and SK only two marks are there. If you don't write provision properly, marks will be deducted. Three marks are always for provision, one mark for correlating, one mark for conclusion. Okay, going back. Just a minute. did this one to five is done this is also done 13th we are doing okay 13b 13b enn limited is availing services of app private limited for its payroll operation okay you are availing services of someone you're availing services of someone sa402 using so service organization so enn is a user entity app private limited is a service organization enn is a user entity app private limited is a service organization and payroll cost is 65 percent of total cost so you're using service organization app has provided type 2 report as per sa402 now uh, you are an auditor of user entity so audit consideration sa402 audit consideration for entities using service organization okay which is the entity using service organization enn you are auditor of enn you are auditor of enn but uh, enn ka work is outsourced to app so i want to understand how app is doing work i am auditor of enn you are auditor of user entity but you want to understand how service organization does the work so you have got a report from service organizations auditor now service organization ka auditors report can be type 1 type 2 type 1 is report on description and design of accounting system internal controls so how are the accounting system internal controls at service organization uske liye unke auditor their auditor has given either type 1 type 2 type 1 is report on description and design type 2 is report on description design and operating effectiveness you got type 2 that's good you got type 2 that's good now you have outsourced to app app has outsourced to smp smp is a subservice organization now the thing is attention you have outsourced to app enn has outsourced to app app has outsourced to smp and type 2 report 
is based on carve out method. Now, what is this carve out method? Carve out method. Now, here is ENN has outsourced the work to APP. I want to, as an auditor of ENN, you are auditor of ENN. As an auditor of ENN, you want to know how the work has been done by APP. The APP's auditor gave you a report about APP's auditor gave you a report about description, operation and effectiveness. So it is basically they gave you about all three things, description, design, operating effectiveness. How is the things at APP? Now IPP has outsourced work to SMP. I want to know what SMP. Now service auditors report may include service auditor, APP's auditor, service auditors report may include the control objectives and the controls at subservice organization. Service auditors report may include the control objectives and the controls at subservice organization or they may not include. If they include, it's an inclusive approach. If they don't include, it's a carve out approach. So APP's auditor, service organization's auditor, Uska report may cover the control objectives and the controls at subservice organization, or they may not cover. So it's a carve out method. Control objectives and controls of subservice organization are not covered. Fine. See here, Raman. While reviewing the unaudit, sorry, unmodified audit report drafted by assistants. Okay, your assistant has drafted unmodified audit report. You are happy with the work of service organization's auditor. Service organization's auditor told you things are fine. You want to rely on it. You want to give a clean report. But he has given a reference of service organization's auditor. Okay. So your assistant has prepared a clean report, your auditor of user entity, ENN. So ENN ka auditor you are, you have got how APP is working from their auditor. You are happy with it. You want to give a clean report. Now question, if I give a clean report, can I mention the name of service auditor on whom I relied? The question is, can I give the name of service auditor? Can I give a reference of service organization's auditor in my report? Can I give a reference of service organization's auditor in my report? See, when you give a clean report, you cannot give a reference of service organization's auditor. But if you want to give other than clean, modified, then you can have after his permission clean report reference not allowed qualified report reference allowed with his permission let's go to the solution okay as per as if we're not to you shall modify the opinion if at all you are not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence you should not refer to the work of service organization modi unmodified me unmodified me you should not use the reference to okay, assistant had given a reference you told assistant to remove the reference clean report reference can't be given your assistant said put the reference you told him to remove that's correct the contention of C. Raman in removing is in order is correct you told your assistant to remove the reference because clean report we can't give reference yeah, next, Chalo, let's move ahead. Keep smiling. 14th, uh, Petro Limited is engaged in generation of electricity for captive consumption. Okay, you are generating electricity for captive consumption. You maintain cost records. Now, Zylo, friend of managing director, suggested name of brother who is a cost accountant for cost audit. Okay, so now your company is generating electricity for captive consumption. You maintain costing records. One of your 
मतलब मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर्स फ्रेंड रेकमेंडेड इज ब्रदर्स नेम फॉर कॉस्ट ऑडिट स्टैट्यूटरी ऑडिटर इज ऑफ द व्यू कॉस्ट ऑडिट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सेक्शन 148 Section one forty eight. Uske under we had done some rules. Companies cost record and audit rules two thousand fourteen. Cost records and audit rules two thousand fourteen. Uske under exemptions from cost audit when cost audit is not applicable. Three things. Three things when cost audit is not applicable when revenue from operations or the revenue in foreign currency. Exceed seventy five percent of total revenue. The revenues in foreign currency exceed seventy five percent of total revenue. Then you don't have to get a cost audit done. Costing records are still to be maintained. Second, if you are basically operating in SEZ, you are not required to have cost audit. And if you are generating electricity for captive consumption, if it's for captive consumption, you don't need. Cost audit. So यहाँ पे यहाँ पे statutory auditor is of the view cost audit not required. Being an expert in cost, you are required to guide them. The cost audit is not required. Correct? Cost audit is not required. It is given under exemptions cost audit rules. Okay, next. This is fine. I don't go to the solution. A K B appointed. AKB and Associates is a firm. They are appointed to conduct statutory audit of Rika, unlisted company. So you are appointed to do statutory audit. You have the following observation. You have the following observation. Management has disclosed in financial. There was a major flood. Major flood losses are there. They have disclosed in financials. See, they have disclosed in financials. Financials are correct. If you want, you can put the emphasis of matter, drawing attention. Emphasis of matter is for something which is there in financials. Perfect. I'm drawing attention. So you can have an emphasis of matter, drawing attention. Second, due to floods, few records with the company were destroyed. Okay, few records are destroyed. Duplicates are not available. Details are not. Pervasive, but material. Okay, the one there is a flood happened. They have disclosed. There is some loss. Loss. Okay, they have disclosed. Loss is not material. I can put an emphasis of matter for it. But some records are destroyed. They are not available. I am not able to check few things. The loss who are immaterial. They have put in the financials. I can draw attention. Loss immaterial. They have put in notes. I can draw attention. But few records are destroyed. I'm not able to check few things, and that is not pervasive. But material, as it's material, I'll give a qualified opinion. So observation one, EOM. Observation one, I have to give EOM. Observation two, I have to give a qualified report for it. How will you report? Let's go to the solution. Okay. This was the earlier question. Cost audit is not required in three cases. Third one is for captive consumption. Okay, observation one: management has disclosed it's not material. You can draw attention under emphasis of matter para. Second, some details are not maintained. मतलब not available. Records are destroyed. You're not able to check. It's not pervasive, but yeah, it's material. So you give a qualified report. Your qualified opinion. You are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Give a qualified opinion. Next, let's move ahead. Fifteenth, F C A N Associate. You are required to check compliance with L O D R. Okay, I have to check compliance with L O D R. Mr. Fine, a director. chairman of stakeholder committee yeah stakeholder relationship committee acting as audit committee chairman in four other listed companies one private company okay the mr fine is a director he is a chairman of stakeholder relationship committee in our company audit committee ka chairman in four other listed and one private 
okay bro five places five companies he is audit committee chairman our company is stakeholder relationship committee chairman total six companies he is a chairman okay four listed plus one unlisted five places audit committee ka meetings chairman and our company is a stakeholder relationship committee's chairman six company he is a chairman now valid not valid a director can become a director can become a member in 10 committees committees of 10 companies a director can become a member in 10 companies so he can be a member in committees of 10 companies and he can be a chairman in committees of five companies maximum the 10 companies may he can be a member of committee five companies may he can be a, a chairman of committee but that does not include private companies it's only public companies so five public companies may he can be a chairman of committee and pe we calculate only audit committee stakeholder relationship committee other committees are not seen only audit committee stakeholder relationship committee he can be a chairman at five public companies five public companies key committees private remove it private remove it the four listed public listed unlisted doesn't matter listed unlisted doesn't matter public okay the four jagger pay out of five remove one private four jagger pay in four places he is in four places he is audit committee chairman one our company is a stakeholder relationship committee chairman total is five valid <coughs> it's valid okay now nomination and nomination committee consists of six members they meet biannually now what do you mean by biannually <coughs> it's not what come only by no 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 biannually is once in two years yeah, you are required to meet once in a year mandatory. So nomination and remuneration committee, they have to meet once in a year. Their meeting biannually is wrong. Okay, this was fine. This is wrong. The risk management committee consists of nine directors. The risk management committee has a nine directors. Number of independent directors are majority number of independent directors majority but what is it was less than two-third of total strength now two-third should be two-third should be independent not majority two-third directors should be independent not majority in the committee only the risk management committee made two-third should be independent director they have only majority which is wrong it should be two-third not the majority let's see the solution it will be more clear uh, this was a scattered answer it was chapter of audit committee and corporate governance okay here are, okay the first director cannot be a chairman in more than five committees across all listed actually listed is interpreted as all public companies yeah, it's given in explanation there private is not included so Four may you are audit committee ka chairman, one may you are stakeholder relationship, total is five. This observation need not be reported. It is fine. You're meeting once in two years, that's wrong. It shall be reported. Biannually is not allowed, you have to meet annually. Uh, risk management committee consists of nine directors. Independent are majority, no, no, no. At least two third shall comprise of independent director. Two third shall comprise of independent. Now, here take this one thing. Uh, is two third is only for companies having SR equity share, superior right equity share. Two third is only for companies having SR superior right equity share. Otherwise, majority is fine. Okay, this company does not have SR equity share. This company does not have SR equity share. Observation need not be reported. Okay, the so risk management committee. Risk management committee. It should have majority independent director for normal company. Two third independent director for 
कंपनीज हैविंग एस आर इक्विटी शेयर सुपीरियर राइट इट्स काइंड ऑफ वो डी वी आर वाले नॉर्मल इक्विटी शेयर है एंड सुपीरियर राइट इक्विटी शेयर देव आर डिफरेंशियल वोटिंग पावर डबल वोटिंग पावर डबल डिविडेंड वॉट एवर So if you don't have SR equity share, majority is fine. If you have a SR equity share, two third you need. This company does not have SR equity share. Majority is valid. Fine. Next sixteen. Let's do it fast. All questions are there in your material. Nothing new in RTP. Don't worry. Uh, there's a bank which provides portfolio management service. Banks can provide portfolio management service, but when own investment and portfolio management service ka investment own you do investments on your own and you do investment for someone you have to keep a separate record an auditor should verify it so your firm is appointed as auditor while verifying transactions you notice bank has not maintained separate records for pms transaction portfolio management service they don't have separate records that's wrong you have to report solution is fine now you are auditor of general insurance company you are auditor of general insurance company during the course of audit you found company was not maintaining the required solvency margin section 64 va you have to maintain solvency margin continuously Throughout the period, they were not maintaining solvency margin. Management says we have to maintain only on last day of financial year. Management says we have to maintain solvency margin only on last day of financial year. Wrong. Solvency margin, your assets minus liabilities should exceed. Asset minus liabilities should be at least fifty percent of the capital requirement any day. The solvency margin is required any day. They say only last day. That is wrong. Let's check the solution. Okay, so this is investment function. Bank has to keep separate records of PMS transaction and own transaction. Sixty-four VA. You are required to have asset over liability. Asset minus liability should be at least fifty fifty percent of minimum capital, and. If you don't maintain IRDA, will say you are insolvent. They can wound up you. You have to give a plan. If suppose your solvency position is not there, you submit a plan to IRDA. IRDA may tell you to change the plan, etc. And yah pe it is for all day. It's basically to be maintained throughout, not only on last day. Every insurer has to maintain this, whereas at all times, yeah, at all times. When you're writing answer, please make sure that at all times you write in capital or you underline it. At all times. Going back, seventeenth, uh, Messrs. P Q R S and Associate is appointed for conducting tax audit. Company has incurred six lakhs. Okay, you are doing tax audit. Company has incurred six lakhs towards advertisement in brochures by political party. Ah, this is to be reported. I think clause twenty one. Clause twenty one of your tax audit report. Clause twenty one of your three C D. Form three C D clause twenty one. May I think it is there. Uh, you have to give. So you have to report the advertisement given in brochures of political party. It's actually a disallowed expense. The auditor has to report it over there. Based on that, ITO will understand this is to be disallowed. So this is there. We have to report so whether such expenditure should be included in tax audit report. Yes, I think it's eighteen G or twenty one G. A B C D E F E six or seventh point it is there. I'll come to it. Okay, now you are appointed as GST auditor. You are appointed as GST auditor. Management is telling you that you have to file GST returns also. See, GST returns is a responsibility of management. They are monthly. So many GST auditor is for audit. So management is telling you that you need to file. the returns as well contention of management is not valid 
they say you have to file returns also not valid you are there to do audit not for filing returns monthly okay next advertisement yeah 21a clause 21a you are required to report under form 3cd uh, gst auditors responsibility is to audit check the reconciliation etc uh, with the returns also we check it preparation of returns is not our responsibility okay this is fine preparation of return the contention of management that you have to file the returns that's not tenable next next apk bank limited okay the bank has got some application from a pharma company for takeover of their loans apk bank limited requires you to make a due diligence in areas of asset now see very clear in the areas of asset for assets they want to make a due diligence and especially with regards to valuation whether the assets are overvalued you know material is a question due diligence for overvalued assets and hidden liabilities there were two parts in that overvalued asset hidden liability they are asking only overvalued asset i'm not going for answer it's there in our material next professional ethics uh, this is an interesting question good one 19a 19a is good shristi and misty okay shristi and misty are two partners they have a firm shristi misty and associate shristi has a religious ceremony at actually at her home i see i does some mistakes fine they change the name without changing the gender the shristi has organized a religious ceremony at her home and has instructed the printing agent to add a designation chartered accountant with his name in invitation card okay so you have a religious function can you add the name chartered accountants in the invitation card of that religious function can you add chartered accountants yes okay can you give your firm name can you give your firm name in that religious invitation yes you can give firm name you can use word chartered accountants but uh, that should be given only to your close relatives families and clients later on the inv invitations were distributed to all the relatives close friends and now clients of both the partners ye galat hai see shristi has this function shristi can distribute to her relatives her friends not to the relatives of partner not to the friends of partner clients are common clients are common client is fine but relatives close friends yours not of your partners practically chal jayega theoretically guilty practically is fine theoretically is guilty okay so this is basically your clause 6 and 7 of first schedule let's move go to the solution one minute okay they are telling era uh, i go to the answer council is allowed to use designation in invitation card provided they send to your close relatives clients and family members only shristi will be held guilty because she has given it to relatives close friends of mishti as well to other partners ki bhi you have given it that is wrong okay moving ahead second miss prito good name a chartered accountant had an account with bank normal balance you keep is below 25000 Okay, the CA who has a bank account normally, the CA keeps the balance below twenty five. Now, bank inadvertently, wrongly credited two lakh fifty thousand in your account. Imagine you are a CA. Your normal balance you are keeping is twenty five. Suddenly, bank has wrongly credited two fifty in your account, two lakh fifty thousand. What did you do? You took out the money, twenty 
25 of yours, 250 there, 275 you took out, you closed the accounts. Now wrongly bank had credited money in your account, you took it, withdraw it, you close the account, bank noticed after one year. But, oh, this we wrongly credited money in her account, she has taken away the money, closed the account and gone. Can bank take actions against you? Can they complain to ICI? You are a CNO. So imagine I have an account with a bank. I normally keep 25,000 balance. One fine day bank wrongly credits 250 in my account. I get 275. I withdraw it, close the account. I open somewhere else. Can now this bank after one year, can they go to ICI? Yes. Reason. Next day in newspaper. Headlines will be there. Chartered accountant that did this fraud. He took away the money, closed the account so that he is not getting caught later. He did not inform to ban. It brings disrepute to ICAI. Disrepute to ICAI. So can bank complain to ICAI? Definitely yes. It is yes. The answer is yes. Bank can complain to ICAI. Let's check the solution. Where is the solution? Bank. Oh, there is the solution. Yeah. It is clause number clause two, part four, first schedule. Yeah, first schedule, part four, was the last clause, clause two. You do anything which brings disrepute to ICA, you're guilty of professional misconduct. Correct. Next, uh, CA Moni is practicing since 2009. You're offered an editorship of a company audit journal and you're not taken permission. Now, clause 11, engaging in other business and profession. Clause 11, part one, first schedule. You're guilty, but editorship of a professional journal is allowed without permission editorship of a professional journal the company audit journal assuming it's a professional journal it's allowed without permission you won't be guilty the money accepted editorship of journal in this context it may be noted that editorship professional journal is covered under general permission money will not be guilty next the last question question number 20 Selection of sample by a reviewer in case of a peer review. Now, peer review process. It is from peer review chapter and the peer review process. There is a point given selection of sample by reviewer. See how it happens. ICI informs you that your firm is selected for peer review. They'll give you names of three reviewers. They'll give you names of three reviewers. Out of three reviewers, you have to select one. Within seven days, you have to inform to ICI. Peer review board. Peer review board will take the consent of that person again within seven days. After that person's consent come, you have to give questionnaire and information to that person within 15 days. Then within 15 days, that person will select a sample. So you have to write about only that. Don't write full peer review process. Don't write full peer review process. Once you give him the duly filled questionnaire and information that peer reviewer will select a sample. He has to select within 15 days plus a date will be decided tentatively when he will visit your place. That is the answer. Don't write full peer review process. The peer reviewer shall within 15 days of receiving information from PU select the sample they will also ask for further clarification if required on-site review will be planned accordingly and based on that that is basically that you have to complete within 90 days don't write full peer review process only that one thing is asked write one thing not fully okay next classification of frauds by nbfc the direct question it's there the list of classification is there six or seven classification that is to be written now next one c is a bit different general steps in risk based audit general steps in risk based audit it's there in our material it's there in our material now there are four steps in risk based audit you can't write general answer you can't write general answer you have to write it properly four steps 
in risk based audit first of all first of all evaluate what are the risky areas in the company to understand the operations evaluate the risky areas understand operations evaluate the risk second what does management have control for it what are controls available by management for it that's the second step third now now you try to identify residual risk yeah. management control will not be able to find it find out residual risk and try to reduce it to acceptably lower level by doing your audit the first identify understand operations identify risk second find what are the management key control for it now you understand residual risk now you do your procedures to bring that risk to acceptably lower level and then you report oh yeah okay so if i go to the solutions classification of fraud is fine general steps in risk based audit first understand the operations identify prioritize the risk second what are the management strategy to control the risk third management controls might not work some place to so manage the residual risk bring it to acceptable level by your audit procedure you bring it to acceptable level by your audit procedure and then you inform auditee about the results okay and the last question was contents of audit plan contents of audit plan now don't write full essay 300 no i tell you again icai doesn't want that full fledged kind of things full essay don't write what is asked that you write your plan should include what should include three things nature timing extent of planned risk assessment procedure how you are ident how you are thinking to identify the risk areas nature timing extent of planned risk assessment procedure nature timing extent of other procedure at each and every assertion level the plan should include how will you identify the risk areas how are you going to check each and every items at nature timing extent of audit procedures to ensure the audit is done in accordance with essay the so three things nature timing extent of planned risk assessment procedure nature timing extent of further audit procedure for each and every item assertion level is single class of transaction single account balance for each and every item and third other planned procedure so that the audit complies with sa you have to write this please don't write full sa 300 don't write planning is very good planning is very important because of planning audit will be better uske zero marks question is very clear what will be included in plan and don't write about overall audit strategy so detailed strategy is not to be written ho gaya this is your rtp of ca final auditing november 2020 full rtp is pretty simple every question which was given is covered in our material now our materials link the six page amendment which i had given after the material given in november 19 batch we had a face to face batch in november 19 uske baad i had given one six page ka amendment that makes up everything given in rtp and i told you i'm not going to say much to you just ensure you don't stop 